Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. As it says, your experience starts now. We have a wonderful, wonderful new day today, which God has allowed us to have another wonderful time. Spend time with each other, learn about the Lord, pray together, praise together. So uh, we're so glad to see you. We've got new faces here. So in a little bit, last time we were here, we said, okay, everybody get up and say hello to the person next to you. Everybody sat still. We're not going to do that this time. We're going to all get up and just say hi to somebody next to you or something. So this morning, we're just glad to see all these smiling faces, even though we got a little bit of rain. That's okay. That's okay. We need it. Everything's green. So w- let's uh, stand up this morning. We're going to go to the wor- Lord in prayer, and then we're going to start praising the Lord this morning. Our Heavenly Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this rain. We, we really need it. And Lord, we remember 21 years ago today when one of the worst things ever to happen in this country. We pray that something like that will never happen again, but Lord, we know it's in your hands. Uh, keep us all safe today, Lord. The ones that can't be here, uh, keep you in, it, in their hearts. And may the words of Pastor Allen touch someone's heart today. Bring them to you. We ask that we keep a safe passage. All the people in uniforms, we ask you to keep them safe. We do that every Sunday. And we all ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I want to hear everybody's voices this morning. <laughs> this morning. You 
the wonderful time of our service that we want to voice our praises, voice our prayer requests. I've got a couple this morning prayer requests. The Cheryl family, uh, Mr. Cheryl passed away. He has a towing uh, service in the local area, and unfortunately, he passed away very suddenly. So let's remember their family. And Ellen and Tim are going to be leaving this afternoon, driving to Kentucky mm. to see the ark. So let's pray for traveling mercies for them. Yeah. Any other prayer or praise requests that I can uh, get up here? Melanie Johnson. All right. Melanie Johnson ended up in the hospital uh, a couple of days ago, so uh, hopefully we'll hear that she's back home. So let's keep her in our prayers. Yes. Eric's back. Woo! We're glad to have you back. We got to keep Richard in our prayers. He's still he's Richard. We're all watching you today. We're all praying for you today. So we're glad he's he's with us. <laughs> yes. And pray for Joanna too. <laughs> we're gonna keep Joanna. She has been a wonderful caretaker. And uh, 
We appreciate her. Tank's back. We've got some new folks. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so glad to be here today, Lord. We thank you, God, for waking us up today, giving us another chance at life. Lord, we have so much to be grateful for. You're all powerful, all wise, all good. Lord, you're a God of love. You sent your only son, Jesus Christ, O oh Father, to die for us. Lord, that victory was won, and it defeated all things. It defeated death, the most cruel of all foes. Oh, Lord, we, we're just so grateful to have the food, the shelter, the rain that you show us, Lord. Oh, God, the, the people that love us and care about us, this church to come to, Lord. We know that if we draw close to you, you said you would draw close to us. Forgive us of our sins today, Lord. Show us the way to go. It's not easy all the time, God, but we, we look to you for discernment, for wisdom, for grace and peace that passes all understanding. We don't need to understand it. We just need to be obeying to you, and you'll show us the way to go. Give us the strength and the grace we need, Lord, to survive in this old world because it's getting crazier and crazier every day. And the older you get, the harder it gets, Father. But there's no problem and no cross that we bear that your son didn't bear already. So, Father, we know you know all about it, all these prayer requests, sickness, death. Oh, Lord, bring it to the foot of the cross. And, God, if it be your will, Lord, you heal all. You will take care of all. Oh, Father, we do pray for this nation. Today is the 21st anniversary of 9-11. God, so many people here now have just inherited their freedom. They didn't have to earn it. There's a big difference. And, Lord, next to your son, the American serviceman and woman, oh, God, they... They gladly gave it all for us, Father. So, Father, we, we're thankful for those people. Help us to learn to be a servitude to others, God, and to have the forgiveness in our heart to love one another. Now, Lord, as we leave here today, let us go out with your love and your light and let us show that love and be uplifting to others, Lord, instead of beating them down. For it's in Jesus' sweet and holy name and for our sakes I ask it. Amen. Amen. Amen.
No, you could get by on that. A lot of people got by, and that's all they knew. My mom had a fifth grade education. When she learned how to read, write, add, and subtract, she went back to the farm. My dad had a ninth grade education. There we go. That's much better there. He had a ninth grade education. But with that little bit of education, they created a home for us five kids. And I never knew we were poor until I got out on my own. And realize that I'm having to eat the same thing out of my home as we eat at home. We eat a lot of rice because it was cheap. But we're getting back to the basics today. Like I said, my mom had a fifth grade education. My dad had a ninth grade education. And they, they, they completed, they finished their earthly goals. Now they, they're working on their heavenly goals because they're in heaven. But they finished their earthly goals and... and and now, as bad as I hate to say it, I look around this room, we are, we, most of us here today, we are finishing up on our earthly goals. We've got our kids raised, and, and now we're just trying to die before the money runs out. <laughs> but we need to know the three R's of God's Word. And we're going to find them here in James chapter 1, starting in verse 19. It says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak, slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Now, when a person is called into full-time ministry, the first thing they need to do is get into a seminary, a good Bible college. And being the overachiever I am, I got my four-year degree in just six short years. But I had to take Greek. I had to take Hebrew. I had to take things with funny names like hermeneutics and homiletics. And I learned how to prepare a three-point sermon with two to three subpoints, which I very rarely do. But this today, we're going to have a three-point sermon. But the seminary and the Bible colleges, they work very hard to take inexperienced people and turn them into skilled pastors, skilled ministers. They teach all the best methods. They let you preach. They give you critiques. But no matter how well you preach, no matter how good your sermon is, there's one part of the process that the preacher has no control over, and that is the attitude of the hearer, the attitude of the people sitting out there where y'all are. We have no control over that. You, you might be the best preacher in the world. You might be the next Billy Graham. But if your words fall on deaf ears, it doesn't matter what you say. Now, Luke, in chapter 8, Jesus tells a parable of the sower, which addresses this. He says, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground when it came up. The plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seeds fell on thorns, and when they grew, it, it choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It, it, it came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was sown. See, in this parable, we see that it is the soil, it's the soil and not the seed that determines the level of productivity. God's word is the seed that we plant. God's word is the seed that we plant. But we 
are like the soil that receives that seed. So James was well aware of this problem, and in light of this, James gives us practical advice on how to, how to respond to God's word. He's given us the three R's. The first one is receptive. Receptive. The first step in being receptive to the word is to be quick to listen. Be quick to listen. The one that's listening is the one that's learning. I learn better by listening and taking notes than I do from reading and studying. And I think this came from learning how to play music. After all these years, I still cannot read sheet music and play. I listen to what I want to play. I listen to it, and then I emulate what I hear. In Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith comes through hearing the message, and the hearing is heard through the Word of God. You know, but sometimes we just don't want to listen. Or is it just me? Sometimes we do not want to listen. My mom was the disciplinarian of the family. She would beat us because she knew we were going to do something, and we deserved it. But my dad would sit us down and talk to us. He sat me down and talked. I hated it because I knew he was right. I knew he was right. I did not want to be that fertile soil that that seed fell on. In order to be responsive to the word, we have to be quick to listen. We have to be quick to listen. So we have to let it soak in. We have to be that fertile soil that where the roots can go down and where, where the moisture can come up and, and, and grow that plant, you know, grow that what we're going here. So we have, to be, we have to be quick to listen. The second step in being receptive to the word is we must be slow to speak. We must be slow to speak. I'm not going to mention anybody's names in here. But we have to be slow to speak sometimes. Constant speaking means we are not in the mode to receive information. That is why we have two ears and we have one mouth. We need to listen twice as much as we speak. And if you notice, our ears are up here out in the open. But God put a wall of teeth around your tongue. It's, it's behind us. So we have to be quick to listen, and we have to be slow to speak. The third step in being receptive to the word is we must be slow to anger. We must be slow to anger. The ability to defeat anger allows us to listen to unpleasant truths. You see, sometimes God's word is harsh. Sometimes God's word hurts. It cuts us. Luke 9 uh, Jesus said to a man, follow me. And the man replied, Lord, let me first go bury my father. Jesus looked at him and said, let the dead bury their own. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. His words sometimes are harsh. But even though they're harsh, they must, we must not let them anger us. Because when we're angry, our thinking is out of balance. Our reasoning is undependable. That's why we say things in anger that we regret later. Once those words leave your mouth, it's too late then. It's too late. Once the, no matter how sorry you are, no matter how you wish you'd never said that, it's too late. You've said it. You've hurt somebody. Proverbs 14, 29 says, A wise man controls his temper. He knows that anger causes mistakes. Now, why would God desire for us not to be angry? Other than the, the things we've already explored here, we're filled with anger. If we're filled with anger, we cannot live out his word in our lives. Ephesians 4 says, be angry, but sin not. And the last step to being receptive to the word, it says to get rid of all that moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. You know, if we're nurturing sinful thoughts, if we're nurturing bad thoughts, if we're, if we just, something going on in our mind, we just don't like people, we have to get rid of all that anger, that evil. It's difficult to accept the truth of God if you have anger in your heart, if you have moral filth, if you have evil in your heart. We just have to turn away from it and ask forgiveness. 
This sin is from the devil. The devil is the, the prince of darkness. And you know there's no such thing as darkness. It's only the absence of light. You can't go in a room and flip a switch and turn on the dark. You turn on the light. The light consumes that darkness. We cannot have light and darkness at the same time. So we must be receptive to the word. Next, we must be responsive. We have to be responsive to the word. First, we must take the word seriously. God has given man a great but risky responsibility. He lets us decide whether we will accept his word or not. He doesn't demand it from us. He gives it to us and lets us make that choice. And unfortunately, we cannot make that choice for others. If we could, nobody would go to hell. We are no better. We cannot accept it arrogantly because we are no better than those who don't accept it. The only difference between us and those who don't accept God's word is our salvation. We need to let God's word rule over us and not try to rule over it. And next, we must understand the power of the word. The power of the, the, power of the living God stands behind his word. His word has the power to convict and to save. It tells us that in verse 21. It, it, to convict us of our sin and save us from separation from God. You need to understand the freedom you have in salvation. People don't realize how much freedom you have in salvation. Jesus said, you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul says, everything is permissible for me. Everything's permissible for us. But not everything is beneficial for us. You see, the word frees us. It frees us, but it frees us to do as we please, but why would we do things that doesn't please God? The Bible says if we're guilty of one offense, then we're guilty of all. We have to be receptive, and we have to be responsive to the Word of God. And thirdly, we must be reactive. We need to be reactive to the Word of God. The command is clear here that we must not merely listen to the word, but we must do what it says. The Bible insists that we practice what we hear. You know, there needs to be an inward practice of meditation on that word, letting, that, letting, that, uh, letting it seek into that, that fertile soil. And then the outward practice of being obedience to the word of God. It's not just enough to remember what we hear and be able to repeat it. My mind does not memorize. It does not memorize scripture and verse. I can, I can, I can recite scripture. I can quote scripture, but I can't tell you what, what book, what chapter, what verse is in. I have to go back and look, look that up. That's, that's just how my mind works. I wish I could, you know. Last week, he came up here and, and he could spout, he could tell you where it, what it says, where it says, and where it was. I can't do that. As hard as I've tried, I can't do that. I can't tell you what chapter and verse it is. I know a few. I know John three sixteen. We all know that one. For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. I know that in Exodus twenty is the Ten Commandments. I know that uh, in James 1, 2, it says, count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds. And we're going to preach on that next Sunday. But God doesn't want us to memorize the whole Bible. He wants us to be doers of the word. And it doesn't matter if it's in Job or John. We must be doers of the word. Verse 25, it says, But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. 
Now, there's a lot of people that claim to live under the authority of the word. But they never put it into practice. For example, in God's word in, in Matthew 28, it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am always with you to the very end of the age. Jesus tells us that we've been commissioned to go and teach all nations. The word commission is to act on another's behalf. The authority to act on another's behalf. When we're doers of God's word, when we're doers of the word, we are commissioned to act on the behalf of Jesus. Being doing, uh, doers of the word is not something we need to take lightly. Mark 16, 15, he says to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Being doers of the word, we have to spread the gospel. As a matter of fact, this commissioning was so important to Jesus, this is the last thing he said before he ascended into heaven. It was the last thing he said to us on earth. Go and make disciples. We've seen it three times, but we see it again in John 20, 21. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. Just as the Father sent Jesus, Jesus is sending us out. You and me. He will not send us out blindly. Acts 1, 8, Jesus said, he, he tells us that, we will receive the power in the Holy Spirit, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. See, our Jerusalem, our Jerusalem is right here in Garner. This is where we start, right here in Garner. This is our Jerusalem. Our Samaria is, the, is North Carolina. Now, Judea is the, uh, the United States, and then they got the rest of the world. Now, I'm not asking you to leave here today and go to some foreign mission field. There's a process. We start here today, we begin that growth process. You see, the mission field starts right outside those doors. It starts right outside those doors, and it spreads all over the world. This is how we are called to be doers of God's word. This is how we must react to God's word. In reacting to God's word, James tells us here, we use the word like, the, like a mirror. We use the mirror to get an accurate appraisal to see how we look. Yeah. Or in this case, to see what's in our hearts. He said we use the mirror to see what needs changing. You know, your hair, your lipstick, and makeup. But he needs we to see what needs changing in our hearts and in our minds. And then we use the mirror to change it. God cared for us enough that he sent us instructions. We need to take the word seriously because it's both the key to eternal life and abundant life. Jesus came that we may have life and have it to the full. But John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life. Have it to the full. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. If you've never accepted Jesus, if you've never asked him to be your personal Savior, I wish you would do it today. We're not promised tomorrow. We never know when we're going to take our last breath. My oldest brother was on his way home one night, and there was a terrible accident. He was thrown from his truck, and the vehicle overturned and landed on top of him. In just an instant, his life was taken from him. We never know when the angel of death is going to come for us. But before it's too late, why don't you call on the Lord to save you? You know, it was too late for my brother. 
As far as I know, he never accepted Jesus' of salvation. When he passed away, when he died that night, he was eternally separated from God. And that's been 46 years, and he's still separated from God, and he will be for all eternity. Everyone bow their heads, close their eyes. If you'd like to accept Jesus as your Savior, you must first believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he was crucified, and he died, and he rose again. Now, if you believe this, you need to go to God and confess that you're a sinner. You need to ask Jesus to come into your heart and save you. And if you do this, this means you'll be born again. You may not feel any different right now. But if you've done this, get with me, get with somebody in the church here, even another pastor from another church. Just get with somebody so they can get you into God's Word and, and seek God's will for you. That you can start being a doer of the Word and let your life be transformed not only here, on earth for eternity Lord Jesus if there's one here today that wants to accept your word Father I pray right now you will start working on their heart you will soften their heart Lord that they would ask Jesus to come in and be the Lord over their life and we're going to open up this altar right now if you'd like to come up and pray you can come up and pray for salvation pray for friends and family whatever you need to pray for if you have a need come up to this altar and pray. We're going to keep it open just a few minutes. I'll sing the next verse with us. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and deny his mercies, mercies for you? Thank you, Lord, for that call that you've called us to come accept your salvation in Jesus. We pray, God, that you will continue to bless our little church here. And, Lord, be with us as we leave here today. Until we meet again, keep us all safe. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to have everybody that's, uh, that's, if we have their email, we're going to email each one of you to uh, join our website. And that way we'll have a record of everybody. What you have to do when you, we get the email, you just create your own your password, which will take you in there, and, uh, and you'll have uh, access to, to other people's names, and eventually we'll put some pictures in there so you can connect names with faces. <laughs> but uh, you just go on there when you get the email. And if we don't have your email, uh, if you don't receive it within the next week or so, let us know, and we'll get your email and put it in there and do that. So now if you look in your bulletins, if you have... Uh, a handwritten note there that says, Praise the Lord. Somebody's got it. Somebody's got it. Who is it? Drum roll. Mm -hmm. Someone, someone, anyone? 
You're missing out. You better find it. Mm. Mm. Huh. Okay. That's the first. That's the first. Nobody has it. So, Lisa. Lisa's a first time visitor today. These flowers are for you to take home. That'll be nice. Right. Let's sing another song. Before we sing, just a reminder the ladies <laughs> of our church and the sisters of strength. The ladies in our church, Sister of Strength, <laughs> I'm not very loud talker, so thank you, Scarlett, um, have put together hand towels for kitchen. They're good for using, gifting, etc. and all the proceeds are going to the building fund. So they're over here on the table. They're $5 a piece or a donation. Also, in the Ziploc bags are bags for people that you might meet that you feel might be in need. They could be homeless. They could be on the street, whatever. Please take one. Put it in your pocketbook or in your car and hand it to somebody that you think might need it. You'd be so surprised how thankful and how wonderful that could be for somebody. And we also have delicious preserves. What kind of preserves? Pear, pear preserves. Pear preserves. And, oh, it's wonderful, wonderful. Sheila made them. So they, that's right. <laughs> Sheila made it so we know it's really good. And they're five dollars a jar over here too, or in the, in the, or a donation. So on your way out, and then tithes and offerings will be on your way out as well. So let's sing a song to end the day. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure. Help us to be a sanctuary for a lost and dying world outside these doors, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all you do here. We pray, God, that you'll put somebody in front of each one of us this week that we can tell about Jesus and what he's done in our lives. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all love each other on the way out. Church, church, council me.